And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Lulu Taric. Uh, we're going to be playing a new version of Lulu Taric here with a whole bunch of support and some spicy stuff at the top end. What's up, Nenuel? So let's see what we got going on here. So, you know, we're going to be playing our our champions that care about supporting, you know, with Lulu and Taric. And a lot of the new support cards, we got Young Witch, we got Tiari in here, Mentor the Stones. So a whole lot of new cards from Call of the Mountain, plus a new card, Tasty Fey Folk. Um, that's a great one to support with the lifesteal that hopefully we can make this thing very large. Um, we have a bunch of Zenith Blades in here also, but then our spicy top end is we got two Horns of the Dragon. So this is a 4-6 double attack, and we're going to be trying to give that Overwhelm as well with Zenith Blade. Preferably, we, we give Zenith Blade to Taric, and then Taric will give Zenith Blade to Horns of the Dragon. Preferably. But also, that's not all. We got, we got a couple of uh, nice little combat tricks in here. We have Ghost to be able to give the Horns of the Dragon elusive as well. And then a couple of Rush. And so I was looking at Rush, I was like, well, Rush doesn't really work with Horns of the Dragon. But Rush isn't for Horns of the Dragon. I, I like how we're playing this Rush, actually, because the Rush is going to be for, like, your tiari to keep it alive um you know like maybe your young witch or your lulu or you know it's going to be for for your units like that like that they get into combat that are doing the supporting that they block they usually die that just for one mana we can help keep them alive so i like that quite a bit so that's what our deck's about a whole bunch of new cards from call of the mountain this one looks pretty good here so we're going to go play uh five games over in ranked Alright, our first match is Gangplank Misfortune. Makes sense to start off against Bilgewater. We got a lot of Bilgewater around these days. We're gonna keep the Mentor the Stones and look for some. There we go, look for just like some cheaper cards. Looks like we got a Young Witch. There we go, a Flower Child. Stop Perfect. Love seeing that. And we, we'll have the attack token on turn three, where we can send in the Mentor of the Stones as well. Depending on what they play, I'm looking at probably going Young Witch supporting the Mentor and making the Mentor... No. And make the Mentor a 2-1. Levitation with quick attack, but that doesn't matter anymore. Store the rations, shackle the princess. Celestial power. Oh, look, well, this isn't looking too good. These hushes aren't really doing anything. I'm honestly a little surprised they made those blocks, to be honest. I kind of expected the petty officer to block this. I have my orders. Yeah, a little surprised by those blocks. Don't worry. I am here. Remember the objectives. The few for the many. <laughs> Dang, so that that game's that good, huh, Nanyol? Marvel's Avengers, that new game. No further. That's gonna hurt. Down to seven already. We had we curved one, two, three, four with a good curve, and we're down to seven already. Wanted to do that that first of healing these a little bit so they couldn't just use like removal spells here. They can't just like make it rain. Right away, in particular, I worry about make it rain. I bite my rules. Shatter them. Yeah, that Jack the Winner is pretty good. Unyielding. Oh, they're our friends. 
It's just definitely worth it to attack now. Because Jack the Winter can only put Tarek down to one health, so they can't kill Tarek. No, doesn't matter. Well, let's put this down to three. Really, we're down to one. Probably going to be game. What do you think of blue instead? Gotta go with the flow. There's my favorite wonderful munchkin. The one who eats. I don't have any, I don't have any, um, expectation that we survive this turn, especially with them just playing a Sprayfin. That should be a burn spell. That's all Sprayfin does is get burn spells. Close game there, close game. Alright, same deck. I'm glad that we're playing the, the Tasty Fae folks. Hopefully no make it rain killing my young witch this time. Ooh, okay, we could just go with Tiari. But it does die to make it rain if they do have a make it rain. Yeah, Devil, we're already two for two playing this deck. Playing against this deck, that is. That is Spell Shield, not elusive. It kind of looks like that's elusive. This way, go! Guess we're going! Well, don't get too close. Get healthy attack in. Looking for trouble. It found you. Could cast Hush on the Misfortune. I'm ready to shine. I don't love that. The mountain endures. Get him, Pix. Just have everything down at one health, I suppose. Love you. But I can go straight to combat. He started without me. Never mind. There is a very good spell for Tarek. So let's see. I would want to do. Lost in Come on, Rib. faster. Slow down. I think this, right? Yeah, we're just going to go to attacks before they make it rain and are able to kill, like, Lulu or Tarek with make it rain. You know, now they, they can't kill any of these three now with the make it rain. We're just going to go right to attacks. Okay, so this will put them down to... Down to six. Now... We'll have some better attackers because, you know, Tarek just got healed. If they don't break, they'll burn. The few for the many. Sure, you're all shiny and majestic, but can you float? I could certainly try. One foot in front of the other. That was how I did it. Don't need 
Richie's. Going down to four with that. Fade and be gone. Let's see, we're gonna heal you. Heal you. Give you a barrier. Grog if you work, burn if you don't. Basically my plan is. My plan is to kill them the next turn with the Young Witch, with help from Lulu. Alright, so you're gonna get plus one plus zero. Might as well give you a barrier as well. Get a pit. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do like I had, how I had it the first time. Oh, oh but then, oh, that only goes to a 5-5. Five five. That's not gonna go to a 6-5. Oh, yeah, I... Your path ends here. That's right. It's not gonna get that plus one, plus zero afterwards. I needed to... Hmm. I guess I had to keep cast Zenith Blade or something. Ugh. Well, that was my bad. Hey, Dragon. How was I gonna kill them? So I had to cast Zenith Blade, I guess. Yeah, I just had I had to cast Zenith Blade. That was a mistake. I was thinking that it, you know, like the 5-5 five five and then the plus one, plus zero, but that's not how that works. That's not how that works. Really hoping they play something before combat. Nope, so I'm going down to one. The mountain endures. Find your own mischief. So it's a pretty aggressive card too. So playing Lulu and Tarek together does uh, does make your deck pretty aggressive. We'll just keep Tarek as well. Let's say hopefully find some cheaper things. All right, not the best curve, but I do like Tasty Faith Folk with that life steal. That life steal can really help turn races into our favor. As we've seen both of these games, we've just been a little bit too slow with these races. Um, you know, like we've lost these races by a turn. Some of that was my fault that last game. Tushcard has just been a completely dead card so far, but this matchup should be a better matchup for Hush, especially if they have like Beihu and Zer that comes in later on. Doesn't seem like a big reason to play Mentor of the Stones right now. And, um,. You know, not attacking, we don't want to trade with Averroes and Sentry. I 
taste purple. Yay. For the homestead. Sure, how I'm gonna keep this Callista from leveling up. Okay, okay. I bring clarity. We could do the elusive on a, these this turn. That'd be pretty nice. Let's see, if I go if I go Zenith Blade, then we have a 3-5 overwhelm and a 5-4 overwhelm. And they could block the five. I guess my 5-4 will be tough. So if they block with Bark Beast. If I just go with the elusive. We're only hitting them for six. And only gaining four. It's time to shine. I think we let their Callista level up, actually. Ouch. Fight the signal fires. That's gonna hurt stuff. That's gonna be a problem. Be a pretty big problem. Pain is nothing. So is that. Opponents have had some really good stuff in these games. They're not making this easy. this easy at all. Because now both of our tasty fey folk are dead. Seen that. Sure, you're all shiny and majestic, but can you float? I could certainly try. Outrageous. Our opponent's decks have looked really good. Like, they're just playing top meta decks and having great hands. The second game. Could have maybe pulled that off if I would have gone with the Overwhelm, but the thing is, if I would have gone with that Overwhelm card, maybe they just have, like, the spell that kills me also. So, like, it wasn't, like, a necessarily we definitely would have won that game. Okay. This should be just another aggro deck that's going going wide. I'm going to mulligan my 1-1. One, one. With that being the case, my 2-mana 1-1. One, one. Everything's in place. We're just seeing how the, the metagame is pretty brutal, these... I pull the strings. Uh, these decks are looking uh, very good, very efficient, very, you know, great curves all the time. If they don't break, they'll burn. For the glory of Noxus. 
Looking a little rough. Here and ends at the top. <laughs> a little rough. No giving up. I will reach the peak. Yeah. I, I could definitely see that being a problem, Cabo, how we only have three one drops in a support deck. We we don't have like the we don't we consistently don't have all the, the cards, you know, like the the other things out here to support. Derek, are you here to help me? The journey is yours, but I'll help where I can. I could certainly see that being our problem. I can heal this too, but it's almost like to what end are we, are we healing this too? Our cards like Hush, Bastion, these kind of cards have looked incredibly slow for how fast our opponent's decks have been. I know, all, all these games have been over turn four. And we, we've been like curving out pretty well and we've been dead on turn four. Already six fearsome damage I can't block. Outrageous. Okay, I'm gonna try the I and mean, we're 0-4 with this deck. I'm gonna try the just completely different copy of Lulu Taric that I put together. Uh that I was gonna play for somebody else that wanted a Mountain Sojourner's deck, but then we got this other donation deck also, so I started playing the other one. Um I have I have six one drops. In my version, I don't have the Tasty Fate folks, but I got a Herald of the Spring. Um, let's try let's try one match with this version with more one drops with the Solari Soldiers. They can maybe help out a little bit. Well, this again. I mean, Young Witch is my two drop, but I kind of hate. I mean, Young Witch can't block, but I guess I guess it's not really about blocking. So hopefully, we find one of our one drops. We really need a one drop. It's unfortunate. We really needed a one drop. I think if we would have had like our our Sulari one drop right here, that would have been great. So then they don't get to attack, and then we'd have something to support on our side. I mean, that's just the difference between winning and losing, but they're just going to have their best one drop, their best two drop all the time. That's just how it goes, I suppose. There's nothing a good giggle can't fix. Woo! Look what I did! Please turn me back! Hmm. Is Caretaker actually better than Tarek? The answer is yes. Caretaker does have three power. It can block these fearsome things. Yeah, I gotta have that one drop. We're getting ran over without having the one drop. If they don't break, I guess I, I should have mulliganed the, you know, I guess I should have mulliganed more looking the for the one drop. These decks are just not messing around though. Let me change you into something more comfortable. Well, you would have been great to have last turn. 
Be able to kill Elise. Oh, they're just gonna replay it. Oh, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> they just replay, we're dead. Yeah, I mean, we just, I guess we got to go way lower to the ground, you know, like these, yeah, like those aggro decks are, are incredibly good, and, and all five of our opponents had, you know, awesome curves, right, like they all had some of their best hands, because there was a couple of times where we had really good hands, like the first two games, um, but all five games, my opponents just had great hands, and their decks just curved out better, and were more aggressive, and, and uh, yeah, it wasn't much of a contest in those um so yeah i think i think that's the main thing is that we need a lot more one drops probably six at the minimum but yeah maybe even more than six because we because lulu shen like we we can't really get behind because these cards don't block and so we were we got behind in those games and the games that were then just over because we don't we don't have like the the nexus damage that the other aggro decks have like they have the nexus damage and we don't block very well. And so we just saw that being a terrible combination of not having Nexus damage, not being able to block very well. So I'd recommend if you're going to go with, with Lulu Tarek moving forward, I would say at minimum six one drops. And honestly, maybe you need a little bit more. Maybe you need like some, some gift givers in here or Green Blade Caretaker as well. Um, you know, if you go a little bit more barrier, but you know, maybe some gift givers, maybe some sparring student. Maybe it's some, something a little bit more, because I think you have to have something on turn one, but then it's not only just have have to have something on turn one, but then also like turn four or five, we got to start double spelling. That's what our opponents were doing. So like, you know, we had to have like three drop plus one drop on turn four or four drop plus one drop on turn five, that kind of stuff. We got to start double spelling. I do think the Tasty Faithful, because that's a, that's a really good card to play. Um, the life, the life steal seems really valuable. And so like maybe, maybe Herald of the Springs is honestly better than Tiari because of that life steal. I think that that's, there's a real good chance I'd, I'd rather be playing Herald of the Spring, um, over Tiari also. Um, uh, but yeah, so that's, that's kind of what we, uh, experienced here, um, and the, playing a whole bunch of one drop should help you get ahead against the the control decks also. But I know they're playing a whole bunch of Avalanche. So trying to find some way to also protect yourself against Avalanche. That's something that you've got to be thinking about as well. Um, but there we go. That was, that was tough. Didn't survive until turn six too much. Um, but that's, that's the thing about this game. It's not always not always roses you know you don't always just win every single game there's you know you're gonna have times where you don't win but you can still you can learn a lot from losing and that's that's what we you know we learned a lot here of just how valuable having um cheap stuff is and how aggressive this this metagame is all right but anyway that's lulu Tarek. um those of y'all watching later on youtube hit that like button over there hope y'all learned stuff too leave those comments um, you know, let me know what you learned or uh, let me know what you think about um, what to do with this deck of changing stuff up and things like that. All right. But anyway, thank you so much for, for watching and I'll see you for the next video.